What is happening guys and welcome back to the channel for today's video the darkness is coming as we're going to be checking out the Transformers studio series rise of the beasts leader class scourge Undeniably the most anticipated figure from the first wave of rise of the beast toys and for good reason This is our new leader of the Terracons the big bad for the upcoming movie And he's got one of the sickest designs. I think we've seen for a very long time So let's jump into the details here We have scourge in his robot mode and I mean straight away this guy just looks like he's gonna absolutely wipe you off the face of the planet. I mean, he has the Terracon logo as his face sculpt, which is just nuts. And not to mention, the light piping throughout this figure is fantastic. So as we just take a closer look, as you can see, really nicely detailed. Initially, I thought the neck was going to be slightly too long, but in person, it looks a heck of a lot better. You can see how we have this armor, which goes all the way around the neck. And we've even got some nice detail within the neck. So that looks pretty cool. I'm not the biggest fan of the ball joint, you know, that's a little ugly being too visible, but besides that, you can see some very nice details here, which I think look cool, and I love the chest grill. I mean, this thing is fantastic, and don't worry, it looks even better when we get him in truck mode. Now, Scourge looks as if though he's going to have some kind of internal furnace going on inside of him, you know, in the movie, I think he's going to illuminate some kind of fire from within, and I think they've done a great job in capturing that. Now, you can remove this, it is a separate piece, and it does reveal some additional details, such as the factions of those he kills. So Scourge is essentially a trophy hunter. Once he kills one of his victims, he'll take their faction insignia and stamp it on himself. And you can see some which are familiar and then some such as these ones here at the top, which to be honest, kind of look like the IDW Wrecker insignias, but we've got Decepticons, Autobots, some Terracons. I mean, this guy kills his own kind and some Maximal insignias. So I thought that was pretty cool. Really looking forward to seeing how that actually plays out in the movie. And it does simply just snap back on. You can see here for the shoulders, we get some very nice paintwork scattered throughout this guy. And not to mention, the chain detail that you'll see throughout is really cool. You know, it goes from behind the grill to the front of the grill. I thought that was really cool. And we get more of that here on this arm, just loaded with mechanical detail. And we get these massive quadruple smokestacks, which just look insane. Now, as we come around to the back, he does have a little backpack. But to be honest, it's nowhere near as bad as some of those early images made it out to be. I mean, from the front, to be honest, it's barely noticeable. From the side, you're not going to notice it. And it's only looking like this because the stacks attached to these pieces. Had they flipped them up, then the stacks probably wouldn't have been able to get into this position. So, again, I don't really have an issue with this at all. You can even see some nice spinal detail on the back of Scourge, which looks insane. And then we come to the arms. Now, we are dealing with an asymmetrical design, much like Revenge of the Fallen Megatron. So this side has an almost electromagnetic claw. I think this is going to generate some kind of EMP burst in the movie. We see him use it very briefly in the latest teaser trailer to wipe out Bumblebee, it would appear. But this looks nuts. It can be fully opened, which we'll talk more about during articulation. But, I mean, check out the detail within those claws. And we get those chains wrapping around the forearm, which just looks nuts. And then this side is slightly more humanoid in terms of design. We do actually get a hand, some very nice sculpt work on this, but a double-sided blade, which looks insane. I mean, check out the sculpt work. You can see some of the cracks here, probably where he slams it through the throats of the Autobots, and through time it's began to age and crack, but that looks so sweet. And it can flip up and peg into the hand for Scourge to wield when in battle, which I thought was awesome. So that's really cool. And another thing you'll notice about this guy is there are no metallic silver pins. All of the pins are black, which I thought was such a nice attention to detail. You know, this guy does have a very dark color scheme. So it's cool to see no silver sticking out through some of these gunmetal components. And then we just work our way down here to the midsection. Again, some very nice kind of dry brushing for this piece. I like the metallic asymmetrical tubes that we have here. There are a few faux pieces, such as these wheels, which situate in the hips, as well as the faux trailer hitch. Now, this is quite unusual because he doesn't actually have a trailer hitch in the alt mode. So, you know, in a way, I kind of wish they would have scrapped this, but... You know, I like the chain detail. This is painted all the way around, so that's really nicely done. Unfortunately, there is a lot of ugly hollowness on the inside of the thighs. Now, considering this is a slightly smaller scaled leader, I don't really think this is acceptable. And to be honest with you, the lower half of the figure is a lot less impressive when in comparison to the upper body. I mean, there really isn't much going on here from a design or an engineering perspective. So, yeah, I definitely think they should have filled out some of these hollow gaps. We do get the wheels here, which, to be honest, don't transform that much besides these ones slightly compressing within the shin, but sculpt work wise, you know, not terrible. Again, get some nice detailing here for the out section and the foot design also looks pretty insane, but articulation is really where I think this figure shines. So we get two ball joints out of the head. So one here for the head itself, this can look up and down as well as can also rotate left to right. And then we get the neck. So the neck itself can rotate left to right and can kind of look down 
I mean, that's really cool. Trust me, guys. I hope I've been able to do this, guys, some justice in the opening shots of utilizing that neck articulation as you can just have him looking down upon his victims. But if you push it too far down or, you know, too far back, it does literally pop clean off the ball joint. So that is something you'll have to watch out for. Now, the shoulders, I've seen quite a few of you guys comment as to whether or not they lock into place. And sadly, they don't. And it would seem as if, though, they should because the teeth, you can kind of imagine this shifting forwards and clicking in, but they just don't lock in at all. So these can rotate independent of what I would imagine is the main shoulder joint that being this piece it can be a little fiddly but you know to be honest I think it aids articulation so I'm not going to complain too much we do get a nice hinge joint going forwards and backwards some wicked bicep rotation but again you can just see that shoulder joint can kind of get on your nerves a little bit we only get single jointed elbows which ain't too bad unfortunately no wrist swivel and I think for this arm in particular especially considering we see him rotate this in the trailer that is a little bit of a shame but the claws are individually articulated so you can splay those open to a massive range I mean that is so awesome I cannot wait to see this guy use this weapon in the movie and then this side is basically the same besides he does have some articulated fingers we do get a nice waist rotation completely unhindered which is sick the hips can kick forwards that far as well as can kick back to that far out to the sides nice fire rotation as well as a single jointed knee and then finally we come here to the foot which can pivot forwards and backwards as well as can rock side to side so again a pretty decent range so articulation scourge certainly isn't slacking and from a design perspective once you get everything kind of correctly aligned i think looks insane now he also comes with an additional accessory that being a swap out component and it is his cannon which we do again see very briefly in the latest teaser trailer and it kind of looks like this is going to transform out of his arm in the movie at least to me these pieces kind of look like the claw but very nice detail and this causes for some sick weapon storage in vehicle mode i'm actually pretty impressed with how they stowed this away but very nicely detailed you know gunmetal gray and then in terms of swapping it out you simply take the lower part of the arm slide it clean off and then we take this is keyed to a certain way and it will just slide over the top and there is scourge with this brand new arm cannon now in terms of weapon storage we do get a nice thick tab here at the back which will just slide into this slot so yeah that's definitely something you can do and for those wondering yes the cannon is blast effect compatible so we can smack one of these siege i think jet fire effects and have him firing down some of the autobots or maybe even the decepticons and for those wondering you can also stow this away if you have the claw arm attached so just to showcase how that looks it does peg into this tiny little slot here at the back so we can just peg that in and scourge is good to go now taking a look at some of those important robot mode comparisons, we have our leader class Scourge compared alongside the Revenge of the Fallen, the Fallen figure, which I still think is the ultimate leader class figure that we've seen for this line. But you can see in terms of scale, he is a slightly smaller leader, nowhere near as big as what we're seeing here from the Fallen, but not too dissimilar in scale when you compare him alongside the Studio Series Dark, the Moon Leader Megatron, and Leader Shockwave. Here for some quick fire comparisons, we have Scourge alongside Revenge of the Fallen, Voyager Megatron, and am I the only one who can see the design similarities between the two especially in the arms let me know down below here's the bumblebee movie voyager class optimus prime rise of the beast battle trap bumblebee movie soundwave transformers legacy leader class scourge deluxe class rise of the beast air razor bumblebee elton john nightbird and then finally the rise of the beast terracon lineup battle trap scourge and nightbird really awesome looking team i just hope they don't get killed off like shatter dropkick and blitzwing now for transformation into one of the most badass looking Mad Max live action trucks we've ever seen. To kickstart things off with, I like to come here to this arm. You'll notice that we have a tiny slot that's going to peg into that tab. So just snap that there. We can then take this hinge joint and bring this here forwards. I then like to take the shoulders and hinge them up just to get them out of the way. And now we can begin work here on the legs, which to be honest is going to be over in literally a flash as they don't do much. So straighten the knee joints all the way forwards. What you'll then want to do is take the foot and it will snap into place on both sides. We can then take this tiny little notch, pull this out as it will combine the two halves. And as I alluded to previously, one wheel is slightly more compressed in for bot mode when in comparison to the other. So you'll just want to take this here and gently snap it into place so that it does align with the top one and do the same here for this side. So just pull that out slightly, just like that. We can then take the thighs, rotate those 
so that the front is now facing the back and I personally would recommend to leave this for now as there's a lot that goes on up top. Now I do unfortunately have to mention something which I found on my copy, it may just be an isolated issue but I thought it was worth mentioning just in case you come into this issue. So as you come here to the back you're going to want to detach this from this tab. Now there is an extending joint which runs all the way through this piece which is complete transparent orange plastic painted over and as you guys may be able to tell I do have a slight crack and it's simply because because when you open this piece here up and then fold out these sections this is kind of on a soft indented clicky joint so by that what I mean is when you bring this over you can see that this has already snapped the indents were just too thick for the transparent plastic so if you do feel a bit of tension I'd personally recommend maybe filing down one of these tiny little nubs either it be here or on the inside or on the back just to prevent that from cracking you can see that has literally cracked and I don't know if that's gonna snap so just bear that in mind but you want to open all of this up take this section here extend this piece out like that now what we can do is take the shoulders disengage those like that and then bring this shoulder joint all the way up and the one that you will originally use for robot mode and bring that down so that it allows for enough clearance for us to just push that over the top of the head we can then take this claw arm and just bring that down like that for now. Come to this side and rinse and repeat. So take that, extend that shoulder joint upwards so that we can bring this over like so. You'll now wanna take this panel, pull this out and this one, and then take this front bumper piece and pull it out until it actually snaps into place. We can then take this whole chest piece and it will detach from this tiny little tab and just to get it out of the way. We can now take these wheels, hinge, these out to the sides now with this one because it's asymmetrical you're going to want to straighten this out and then just rotate it around so that it doesn't bump into what were originally the shoulders and just snap that in there now I wouldn't recommend closing this up just yet as what you're going to want to do is straighten out the arms on the inside so just make sure that they are completely flush with this piece now what we can do is transform this whole upper assembly so you're basically just going to want to collapse it in upon itself just like that snap that into place and what's going to happen is that will just go over the top and then these two pieces here will lock in to place just like this now we can take the wheels and snap those into place do the same here for this side so snap that one in and then take the front grill and peg that into the front now we can come back here to the legs so what you're going to want to do is there's a big tab on the outside of this blade that's going to peg onto this slot on the inside of the leg so snap that in there we can now take the toe detach it and fold it inwards until it snaps into place and then with this side do the same fold this down and then peg it in until it snaps into place and then as we flip to the underside you'll notice that there are a few circular cutouts on the inside of the leg that are going to peg into these pieces so just make sure they're locked in and then we can come back to the back and snap that in, make sure everything is nice and tapped in. We can then take the smokestacks, angle these out on both sides. And then what's gonna happen on this side is because it's asymmetrical, there are kind of these grips that are gonna basically holster over the top of this piece of the claw. And then this section here is gonna slide into this cutout. And then this tab is gonna peg into that slot. So three connecting points, just make sure they're all snapped into place as you guys can see so far so good and this one's a little more simpler because there's no claw for this to go over the top so we can just snap that in there and that is the base truck mode transformed but as I said previously the cannon also has a role to play here for transformation so you're going to want to take it split it open like that bring this panel like so rotate these outwards and what's going to happen is we have two tabs on the bed of the truck that are going to slide into these two slots which is movie accurate this detail is accurate to the real truck which i'll be sure to showcase in just a second but snap that into that side and do the exact same here for that side and bang there you have leader class terracon scourge fully transformed up into his sick looking truck mode and i mean this is just the meanest thing i think we've seen for the live action movies since the dark of the moon megatron tanker truck this thing is nuts looking so let's jump into its details first of all we have to talk about the grill i mean this time around you saw some of those faction insignias in the robot mode but you can see so many more here in truck mode so we get the terracon logo slap bang and 
center for Scourge, you know, because he is a Terracon. And then we get a shed ton of additional insignias. So there's some Maximals, there's some Autobots. Again, there appears to be that kind of IDW Wrecker insignia, which looks sick. And then we get all of the ones on that orange piece of plastic, which I showcased previously, but that is just so cool. We even get some indicator lights, which have been painted. So the front of the truck looks awesome. Now, as we come here to the side, there are a few gaps. And, you know, initially I thought it was ugly, but it kind of gives you that internal furnace look. You can just imagine Scourge cooking something up within the hood of this vehicle. So, you know what, to be honest, I don't think it looks that bad at all. And I really like the orange plastic. Had the orange plastic not been there, then maybe it would have looked a little ugly, but I like it. We do get some nice details here fully painted and I love this kind of serrated sun visor we have that looks so awesome you can see we get the horn loads of awesome paintwork scattered throughout this thing we get those massive smokestacks which much like the bot mode have got all of these chains kind of wrapped around them which looks cool now I will be honest and say from a kind of side perspective it does appear as if though the rear of the truck is slightly longer than how it appears in the movie you know had they found a way to have maybe shifted these wheels up to where these pieces are I think that maybe would have looked a little cooler and not to mention the rear of the truck is very ugly. I mean, it's full of junk. It doesn't look the greatest, but these pieces are indeed accurate to the back of the truck used on the film. So, you know, you have to give credit where it's due. That is a great use of weapon storage. And, you know, this truck just looks kind of mean and like it's been mashed up anyway. So some of the kibble we do have here, honestly, isn't too distracting, I'm going to be honest. So... Yeah, overall, very nicely done looking truck. I love that translucent orange. It just looks so formidable. Kind of reminds me of the Jeepers Creepers truck as well. But this is what Scourge looks like from an underside. And all of the wheels are fully pinned on. Meaning that, as you would expect, he glides along the ground with absolute ease. I mean, check that out. Listen, no ugly scratching or scraping, just such a cool figure. I mean, this is what Dark of the Moon Megatron should have been. Had they got rid of the oil tanker and just kept the cab of the truck, I think that our leader class Megatron would have turned out so much better as this is really cool looking. I mean, just check it out. The only thing which kind of gets on my nerves here in the truck mode would be that the smokestacks don't really tab into place, meaning that when you're handling them, it doesn't take much at all to kind of mangle them up. But simply just straighten them out and Terracon Scourge is good to go. And they even painted the insides of the chains as well as the outside. So... That's a pretty sweet attention to detail, and this entire rear piece of the truck will be compatible with the upcoming Terracon Core Class Freezer. He will peg into these grooves and kind of act as a back turret, which is sick, but, you know, considering this is a smaller leader class, I maybe would have wished that they would have packaged Freezer in with Scourge, as I think overall that definitely would have made this more than worth the leader price point but as it stands i mean what do you guys think let me know down in the comment section below now as we take a look at a few truck mode comparisons we have terracon scourge alongside the bumblebee movie voyager class optimus prime studio series voyager class battle trap which looks to be pretty accurate to that image they released of all three terracons and talking of here we have all three of them so here's the mainline deluxe class nightbird and even in vehicle mode shaping up to be such a sick team i'll give you guys a little bit of a closer comparison between deluxe nightbird and leader scourge here he is alongside the rise of the beasts deluxe class bumblebee the Deluxe Class Rise of the Beasts Elton John, so a much bigger truck in comparison to this, which I think is a Volkswagen van. And here he is alongside another leader scourge, that being the version that we saw for the Legacy line. So, I mean, in terms of an actual truck, this is much bigger when in comparison to this. But as we take a look at them from a side-by-side -side perspective, I'd say in terms of length, they're probably about equal, to be honest with you guys. Maybe the Rise of the Beast scourge is just ever so slightly bigger, but in terms of mass, obviously, this one is much larger. And wrapping up on my review for the Transformers Rise of the Beast Studio Series Leader Class Scourge. For the most part, I think it's a pretty nicely done figure. I mean, as we just talked through the robot mode, really nice attention to detail. I love the color palette on this guy. It appears to be pretty accurate from that brief glimpse we saw of him in the trailer. I love the translucent orange burning effect. You know, that internal furnace that he has in both vehicle and robot mode is just so formidable. Cannot wait to see this guy on the big screen. And the details of the little faction insignias are really cool. It's something I wasn't too sure they were going to be able to replicate in a league as nicely as they have but yeah cool I like the weapons you know the big massive electromagnetic claw that huge sword that he has from the underside of the arm and not to mention that massive cannon they're really nice great articulation the legs in the robot mode do appear to be a little lazy but like I said we haven't got a great full body shot of Scourge yet so for all we know that could be completely accurate to the movie transformation the upper half is very complex where the lower half is a little more straightforward and I have to talk about that kind of crack that I have in the translucent orange plastic it could just be an issue on my copy but I thought 
thought it was something worth bearing in mind, especially if you do feel a bit of tension in that transformation joint. And the truck mode, for the most part, I think looks just as insane as the robot mode. So scary looking. I mean, if this thing was charging towards you, I certainly know which direction I'd be going in. Wicked front grille, awesome translucent orange plastic. There are a few kind of ugly gaps, but I don't mind the ones so much in the front because we have that translucent orange plastic. It's really the ones in the back, especially those hollow gaps in the thighs. They don't look the best. And, you know, maybe they could have tidied up the truck bed just a little bit, but overall, definitely not a bad figure. Is it one that I would say pick up immediately? Honestly, guys, I mean, if you can find it on sale, that is great. Definitely. If you can find this at a reduced price tag, pick it up. I mean, if I was given the option between this or The Fallen or this or a Studio Series Dinobot, to be honest, in terms of value for money, I'd probably go with the other figures when in comparison to this guy because he is a little more dainty. It doesn't feel like you're getting as much as you are with some of those other figures. But let me know down in the comment section below what do you guys think. Until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.